If you want to come back, we've got a little Q&A session. Come back. <laughs> Sheila. You may be sitting down for your work. Three pictures, three of them are very different, three different subjects, but you've got a chance to ask any of the three of them any questions about what they've just been talking about. Have I dragged them all the way out of their chairs? You need to give them an answer yeah. now, Chief. Oh, no! Yeah. <laughs> Go on! Hello, is that working? Yeah. Uh, it's Jackie Wickham from the RSP. It's, um, it's a question for Jodie. Okay. Pay attention, please. <laughs> um, you said about have numbers increased. Is that numbers of full tax deposits? Is that the measure of success? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, a question for Adrian. Um, when you were describing, for instance, your attempts to do bits of automated matching there, and, and imply it is clearly harder to do it precisely than, than one would like, but, but you seem to imply that the, let's say, the excessive matches you were getting there for Abac of any, the example you gave, was a, it sounds as if you were thinking it was a big problem. And at the scale that was happening there, it struck me as not necessarily a very big problem. If you get thousands of matches or something really where you want one, that's bad, but a few possibly you can handle it. it? Well, it was, I suppose it, it um, I mean, there may be, a, in, in a sense, we, we were doing this quite late in the project, and it may be that there's stuff that we don't know about to help us sort of solve the problem from that point, but it's still, I suppose, if there was four matches, it still meant that we had to look at it manually, I suppose, because, we, you know, if we wanted to use, if we wanted to use, if we wanted to have a match at all, We'd have to sort of, I mean, we, you know, we managed to pare it down reasonably successfully in, in certain ways. I mean, yeah, if it had been like, we've had 300 matches, then we'd have a, an, on, you know, a problem we couldn't solve at all. But as, as it is, you know, we, we've kind of had to do some, um, some cheating, I suppose. We, we, we've, we've taken that as a starting point. Um, and then, you know, had to go away and just check things and then make decisions. In some cases, we, we couldn't. But um, I suppose it still felt like a, a significant problem in that respect. Yeah. I mean, I'm just struck. I, I, I think there's a fair number of online services that must be using similar techniques, given the inaccuracy sometimes of the data yeah. they do, and yet they're still useful because humans can filter out the small number of, of um, alternatives and, and, and pick out the real. Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. I mean, I mean, something we're going to look at a lot more on the, on the next project, so maybe we'll start to find ways of doing it. Um, but I mean, Darren mentioned that you know if you're making very strong links of certain sorts, that one, yeah. then you know you you perhaps need to be more sure, and you don't want to give the wrong impression that somewhere in the UK is the same place as somewhere in the States or something. But you know, yeah, there are ways of, of softening the links. So um, yeah, it's stuff for us to think about, I suppose. It's, it's more just to give give a flavour of what was coming up. But uh, I'm glad that you uh, have, a, have a more positive slant on it in a sense. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Achieved, I think, in a, in a yeah. short time. Another one for Adrian. Uh, Peter Murray Rust, another one for Adrian. Uh, pleased to see that your um, author metadata was fully open. Um, how many records are there? How did they get there as open? And what is the openness of the rest of the low carb content? Um, well, at the moment it's, it's a subset, so um, I think it was I think it was a few thousand a few thousand records actually. We, we, we've sort of been scaling up, so I'm not absolutely sure it is now. We would like to we would like to make the whole of the archives of open, you know. The, the, we, so we've, we've got a style sheet now, and we hope that it won't fall over when we run it across the whole set of records. There might be issues, but we are actually um, intending to make the whole of the archives of set available. In all honesty, I'm not absolutely sure what the, what the size of that is, but it would be, it looks like we will be able to make the whole thing CC0. Um, so in, in that sense, it, it should be. And also COPAC is, is the same, in fact. So initially, so the COPAC data comes, uh, a lot of it comes from the RL UK, and they were, they were a bit uncomfortable when we first spoke to them. But they're now on board, actually. In fact, it feels like, it feels like there's a 
which I'm kind of meant to say, but it feels like things have been moving in, a, in the right direction in that respect. So both, both data sets should be, hopefully, which would completely open. I'm sorry I've got the numbers on the, off the top of my I mean, the code pack is huge, actually. That's many millions of records, so that, that might present an issue in terms of just triple store scalability and stuff like that. So that, that's, that's, that's another issue. But we're kind of, uh, with the hub, we certainly tend to make it all available. Can I ask a similar question, actually, for Sheila? Mm -hmm. In the OpenURL data, how, how many years or months does it cover? It covers from the 1st of April this year, so all the data that I showed in the graphs is the stuff which is now released. Right. And we couldn't do it sooner because we had a whole other section of the project I didn't have time to talk about, which was about um, looking at uh, the data privacy concerns and what we could actually do in terms of making the data available. Um, because this is activity data, this is hidden underneath, it's from the middleware, and we needed permission to be able to get it. So we couldn't show anything from previously because we don't have the permission. Um, which we now have from the 1st of April. And it will be and ongoing? It'll be, yeah, it will be made available ongoing, yeah. Any further questions? Hi there, this is a question for Reposit. Um, so I think actually Richard might be able to answer this one. It's the <laughs> no, it's the, it was an interesting use of um, Sherpa Romeo in the... Um, Symplectic system. Do you want to say more about that? That, or, or do you want to say more about that? In terms of. In terms of deposit and showing the potential deposit against what the actual is. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's an that's an incredible driver actually because the faculty have been going in and approving is it my publication and now with the link, we're we're catching them and saying oh you had a paper. But we're finding that they probably deleted the copy that we actually could have put in the open access repository. But yeah, I mean, that's the excellent joining up between the two because you're getting all this added value between symplectic as where that wasn't in the system before. It was just goodwill, deposit your paper, here you go. And now you have this, this, this email reminder that's going out to the faculty, oh, by the way, you have a paper. Exactly, deposit. yeah. Well, Richard can answer it too. Ramble briefly about the, the Romeo stuff. I, the, the really interesting stat for the Romeo stuff for me was that um, once you've got a big publications database full of ISSNs, you can go and look them all up on Romeo and figure out what's green, what's yellow, what's blue, what's purple, what's mauve, whatever the colours were, um, and, and, and produce some statistics for repository managers to say, this is your potential deposit capacity. The, this is 40% of your archive, or 40% of your published, your author's publications are Romeo Green, so you've got a kind of target to aim for and a kind of realistic expectations of what you might be able to actually collect in, uh, in an ideal world. I'd like to call it there, because I'd like to get on with the next set of mm -hmm. presentations. I'm more important to coffee afterwards. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>